Roxo Media House. Jeff Wilson started covering the Texas Rangers in 2008, though he'll never forget 2021. Out on his own, he decided it was time to do a podcast, but his wheels were spinning until a nerd came along. There's no going back now. Welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. Here's your host, Jeff Wilson, and the recliner nerd himself, John Moore. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 50. Where's the confetti? Yeah, no, it's it's here. It's number 50. (laughs) And, guys, this is a huge one because Texas Rangers general manager, Chris Young, is going to join us. It is an off day. He's going to join us. This is Monday afternoon that we're doing this, but we were going to do this special one for this anyway. We wanted to do a Rangers Today Q&A or AMA. Uh, ask me anything. Ask me anything yeah. hashtag. So we, we're we going to do that instead of going through our normal down in the bus leagues and all of that. We figured we'd get into some questions. They kind of lead both to the minor leagues and the major leagues in both. So we're going to go through that. And the first <laughs> one we're going to do, anything else you want to, hey, 50, this yeah, is good. F- 50, yeah, I, I can't believe that. That means it was just about a year ago uh, this week when we had our first one uh john daniels was the guest yep um you know we and my wife god bless her would would try to get some of them on video and from our from our office and you know between her job and and really the last thing she needed to be doing but right uh you know i give all all the credit in the world to john here because he's the one who had all the equipment at first and now we got this fancy yeah. little studio here and uh really it, it's, been, it's been great you know and you know, I think uh, looking at our analytics, uh, we, we've probably had around 50,000 plays, just audio plays. Just uh, audio, yes. Yeah, 35,000 on Apple and uh, our, our <clears throat> since, we, since, we, since we've 20. come to the studio, yeah. um, a lot of lot of good uh, episodes like, you know, the Bubba Thompson episode, he's behind you, is our number one uh, all time, on, yep. at least on the video side. And uh, Dane Acker was, was another one, so... Uh, ho- hopefully this one will 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 get up there as well. But uh, again, you know, it's just it's thanks to you guys. Yeah, exactly, hey. and that's what I was getting to. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for subscribing to Rangers today for five ninety nine a month or sixty dollars for a year or thirty five dollars for six months, which has been a pretty popular one of late. Yep. Uh, and then you got to subscribe to the YouTube channel too because uh, you know baseball off season is not an off season for journalists and. Uh, uh, especially this year, if the manager getting hired, yep, and and the free agency, and yep. you know, I'm assuming they're going to have a winter meetings in December, so we'll have to figure out how to do a show from there. But um, it's uh, it's year round coverage, and uh, you guys make it happen. So Absolutely. thanks to you, and yeah, let's get on with number fifty here. All right, well, number fifty Q and A. Let's do Ask Me Anything. That's what we're going to do. Let's start yeah. off with Kelly. <laughs> Kelly wants to know why is Simeon leading off? Yeah, well, Kelly, it's a good question. I think, uh, and I actually. Uh, I haven't responded to you on email yet, uh, but um, I asked Tony Beasley about it. In fact, and I said, "Well, what is what is That's Marcus? That's the best way to answer. Yeah, fan, what is it? Marcus Simeon's best uh, best spot? Best best leadoff spot? Or I'm sorry, best spot in the the lineup? And and he thinks it's two or three. Um, you know, he he thinks that Leody Tavares could be a leadoff hitter. He 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 talked about uh, Bubba Thompson and Leody being one two one day and what how much fun that would be. I actually wrote about it Sunday at, at Rangers today. Um, I think Simeon bats first for for a couple of reasons. He he can make it one to nothing real quick. One swing of the bat, he can make it one to nothing. And you know if you look at his overall numbers, they're they're not great. But if you look at his numbers really from let's say third week of May on, and and they're 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 pretty good. And so I, I think. It can be aggravating when he swings at the first pitch. I mean, that, that happens with everybody. But um, I, I, I think right now, with the way this team is constructed, he he probably is the best fit for that. Yeah, and let's be honest. If 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 he's your number one, if he's your leadoff hitter on a team that's contending, you're probably not contending. I think he is a better suited two three hole hitter. Yeah. What he does with yeah. the power. Now he likes hitting leadoff. Sure, yeah, he likes yeah. to get up there and, and and make something happen. I think on a good team, though, you know, you've got a better leadoff hitter. I, I'm, uh, uh, a more traditional, a more traditional, hitter, and you can put hitter. his power deeper in the lineup. But you know, you, still, run, you still want him getting an extra out bat a game. I think so. You don't want him going that's to be lower what's, than three. That's what's good about it. Absolutely. Yeah. But RBIs come when people are on the bag. That's true. And so you know, they, and that happens. Okay, Andrew <laughs> Hoyleskin, I think, is what his name is. He said Zavala is hitting over four hundred at Frisco. Any chance we see him at Round Rock this year? Also. What free agent pitchers do you think the Rangers are interested in? We'll start uh, off with Zavala. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think he'll be at AAA. I think uh, at some at some point he'll encounter a hiccup here at Frisco, and 
um, you know, going going from high A to double A is tough. Um, I, I don't know that they would throw throw triple A on him, but you're right, he's been great. I mean, he he, he had a walk off hit Sunday. Mm-hmm. He had a walk off walk the other day, and I mean that's that's kind of the thing that that he can do is he knows the strike zone, and you know as as umpiring gets better with each level and as pitchers get better, he's going to be he's going to benefit from from having uh, tighter strike zones and guys who who know where to put the ball and and do it more consistently. So I I think that. And, and Ross Fenstermaker, who is the uh, VP in charge of player development, made this point. Um, the higher the higher Zavala gets, the better he has a chance to get. So yep. I think that I think that's uh, potentially pretty pretty exciting. Before you answer that other question, I've got another one like that. So let's combine oh, them right, together right, to talk right, about free right, agent. Right. I wanted to say something about Zavala. I think a lot of people thought this about Zavala too, and you and I had talked about it before. When he was in high A, he's such a selective hitter and the arms don't quite as have much control. He walked a lot more, and he wasn't getting to hit the pitch he liked. Pitching's better at double A. Yes, he's having success, but eventually there's a book on a person. Like yeah. you said, yeah. you're going to go through some struggles. Um, you know, if they put him at triple A, maybe there's a whole rash of them, but they don't have to. No. no, they don't have to, and he is proving right away that this is a he, he can be a major league player. Well, and what this what this might do, if let's say he finishes this season, there's uh, three more weeks. Let's say he finishes it hitting... I'll say he's hitting 350 at Frisco. Right. He could catapult to AAA to start next year, or they send him back to Frisco for a month. If he does the same thing, then he finishes in AAA, or maybe maybe finishes with the with the big league club, depending on how things shake out. Look, he is not a guy that's Rule 5 eligible. They don't have to worry about that. Right. They're not going to – he would have to bang his way into the major league lineup, which he could do by the end of next year. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. But yeah, it's a great question. But, okay, writing for the Rangers wants to know, where in the world is Josh Young? Now, this <laughs> – this is Monday afternoon. We got Chris Young coming on, who's probably not going to tell us one way or the other. He may be in, I'll tell you what, he may be in the big leagues when you see this. Yeah. But where is he? He's in AAA. Why is he in AAA? He's still in spring training. That's what Chris Young That's what they me. say. And I know I know uh, people have, have uh, on, on the Twitter, they've responded like, oh, well, you know, AAA, well, you know, he's got 90, 90 at-bats. You know, nobody, nobody gets 90 at-bats in, in a big league spring training. And those... Those things aren't wrong, but they kind of throw out the uh, the the Arizona Complex League. You know, those aren't com- necessarily competitive at bats. I mean, Josh Young didn't go twenty five for twenty five, but right, uh, he's see- he's seen better pitching, obviously at AAA. He 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 was hot, and now he's kind of in a little bit of a rut. Right. Um, so that, one for they, five is last <clears throat> last game, I think. Or? He was one for four yesterday. Right. 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 Sunday. Right. Anyway, they want to they want to see him kind of deal with deal with a little adversity but they want to make sure he's healthy and and he did not play every day this week he was off saturday it was a designed off day and uh they're they're taking it careful with this guy look the the team the rangers are not in contention no (laughs) they don't need josh young uh they do need to put him on the 40 man because he's one of the rule five eligibles one of and you and i both one of 300 rule five eligibles uh and and it you know, and they've basically said, yeah, he's going to be in the major leagues this year. But, right. Um, and and as badly as uh, I think a lot of people, including myself, want to see it, it's just kind of on their timeline. And um, maybe it happened. I, I would be shocked if it happened. I guess I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be surprised if it happened on the road. I mean, wouldn't you want that debut to be at home? Sure. You know, what if he goes to goes on the road and makes his debut and they, it's a seven-game road trip and he goes – he goes two for 35, you know, is that going to generate excitement for his, his debut at home? So, uh, of course, if it's not these next two days, Tuesday and Wednesday against the Astros, the Rangers aren't home again until September 9th. Sure. And that seems like a really long time to, to, to do that to him, but, uh, you never know, you never right. know, but as you're seeing this, he may have played two games. I mean, as, as we, as we look from the outside, it's like, why is he not here? But from the inside, the view is a lot different. Absolutely. Okay. Ryan Murray. No, wait, I'm sorry. Edgar Vargas, is low A that much of a pitcher's league or is down east just exceeding expectations? Well, you know, the down east lineup is pretty interesting because they have, uh, like, a Mark, Marcus Smith, who we talked to in spring training, great kid. He has, like, the craziest stat line. He's, he's hitting below 200. I mean, he's hitting, at one point he was hitting about 150, but he has, like, 40 stolen bases, and he's walking and getting on base, and then he right. has a bunch of home runs. So, um it, it's interesting, you know. These are the young guys who, um, you know, 
Mark, in Marcus's case, he didn't play in 2020 because of COVID. And then, uh, uh, I mean, that was the year he's drafted also. But And then in, in uh, 2021, he was hurt. And um, so that he only played, what, four games, I think? So he's really kind of behind. But these are these are young and inexperienced players. I guess Marcus wasn't drafted in 2020. That's when the Rangers mm-hmm. got him. Anyway. <laughs> You, you look at their names like Cam Colley, who, who was a 2021 draft pick for the Rangers, Ian right. Muller. It took them some time and and to to get used to the best pitching they've ever seen. Exactly. And, and, um, but if you look at the way they they steal bases, uh, it's nuts. I yeah. mean, they are they are all over the place. They they are really kind of epitomizing taking advantage of, of what's there and, and playing the game. And You've seen Daniel Mateo come on. You saw Yosi Galan hot early, and and he's still there, but he's hitting home runs. Right. Uh, again, these guys are learning, and um, I, I think you know you've seen pit, you do you have seen Downey's pitchers now advance to to high A, um, Larson Kendrich, and you've seen some relievers go there. You know, like Mitch Brad is only what he's a very young yep and and a very young nineteen former guest he he came on right before his birthday yeah. there in july and um so so they have the young arms that are very good but they are they are hitting but it it, it can be very inconsistent down there yeah and I, th- I think that to answer your question is it a pitching league i think more than anything pitchers are probably a little more ahead of hitters trying mm-hmm. to get used to wooden bats if they're coming out of high school or even college this yeah. is their first full season to do things it's look you any player whether they're a college player or a high school player they're used to playing a lot less games than they're going to play in a full season of pro ball. At least 130 to 45 games. It's 145 in minor leagues. It's a big number. It's a big number. (laughs) And they're playing every day. They're playing six days a week. Sure, they're going to get off days in there. It's just an adjustment. And these kids, they're the kids. That's what they are. They're the kids. And that's that's where you're seeing that. Okay, Ryan Murray. This one's interesting because you could have two answers here. My perspective and yours as a guy that, that has traveled to all of them from the press box, yeah. he is saying which team and stadium has provided the best player coach fan experience and why from a, you have seen every stadium basically from a press box. I and I do, I can get press credentials down the road. I haven't done it, but I've been to a lot of road stadiums yeah. from a fan experience. Tell them about you and what do you see and where do you think the fun ones are? Or what's in- okay. Uh, I think, I think, I think Seattle does a tremendous job. Um, just does a tremendous job. Okay. Uh, the, I tell you what, they hit it out of the park on national anthems. They have fantastic national anthem singers, and and uh, but they have a like a, a really interact, really interactive pregame stuff, on field activities. Minnesota's very good, also with, with their in game entertainment. Um, now, from a work perspective, honestly, and I think I've said this before. One of the best places from a work perspective is Tampa Bay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, that. it's not a great stadium, but the press box is right there in the crowd. You're you're close enough. You got to watch out for foul balls. It's that close. Uh, it's it's easy to get to the clubhouse. The visiting clubhouse is big. That's huge for a rider to get so, down to the clubhouse uh, pretty quick. It, it's it's really good for from a work perspective. And you show up and you know you're going to play. Uh, that that's big for me. You know, I, and you know, so Seattle, you know, you're going to play Toronto, our, our place, right? Other other places with roofs, but like Seattle's freezing cold, and they open the press box windows. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> what the temperature is. Those damn windows are open, and the wind is always blowing in. Right. And like in April and May, it is frigid. It's Ugh. the coldest I've ever been at, at at a major league game. Is is Seattle? Like five layers. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm not lying. And it's gloves typing with gloves. It's terrible. Well, and, and I've done a lot of them for a fan experience. I have not been to every stadium, but I've been to a lot of the big ones that a lot of you ask about. I'll tell you some fun things as a fan. Uh, if you want us to talk outside atmosphere and what goes on around the stadium, Boston, yeah. Yeah. the Cubs, and the Yankees all have outside sure. stuff where sure. there's bars and everything around there. If you like to have a cold beer, do something like that. It's great fan experience. Um, the ones that, that weren't that fun for me were the White Sox. I didn't think that was yeah, very... No particularly riding the train oakland oakland is not no, fun at all no. as a fan you, perspective um i think uh you know when i went to the oakland one i also went to the san francisco since they're right across the bay great stadium didn't have a rooting interest so it's fun to walk around and see the stadium yeah, the covey cove yeah. and do that's neat the food the best food i had was in baltimore 
Um, and <laughs> I, I, you eat in the press box, but I went out and ate some okay. uh, stuff out in the there, and we had some seafood stuff out there. I forget what it was we had that was really good. But if you were going to go and you had not been on a road trip, you were going to go to any one of them, I would say you would look at either New York, Boston, or Chicago would be one of your top three. They're, they're storied uh, stadiums, storied yeah. franchises, lots to do in those cities. And then, of course, Seattle's one I want to see. Y'all have talked about. And, yeah. uh, but that, but it's definitely one of those three. If you haven't done one yet, they're a good experience altogether just to go watch baseball. Well, P- Pittsburgh has the best view. Pitts- Pittsburgh's haven't fan- been there. Pittsburgh's fantastic. Uh, personally, I love, I like going to Washington, D.C. because I, I do the museums before the sure. game and I, I love D.C. Haven't done that one, so yeah. So uh, those are probably, if I had to pick my two favorites, I've only been to Pittsburgh for two games, but they're going uh, back there next year. I know, and I'm, I will be there too. And they go to Washington as well. So <laughs> those are those are already circled. And of course, I'm very partial to Denver because that's where I'm from. Absolutely. But, uh, God, what a big ballpark. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Okay, Andrew Fegley, where do you see this franchise in three years? Uh, I see them contending for the postseason. Um, I'm not going to predict any World Series or anything like that. But you know, if you kind of look at the division. Uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get from Oakland, uh, right. there, but they are rebuilding uh, the Angels. Of uh, you know, I, I think that them selling the team might actually help them. Right. With Hardy Moreno not not being around, dictating things, and then uh, being beholden to the the luxury tax threshold that he refuses to go over. Um, the Rangers are kind of in this op- opening this window. Seattle's in it right now, and then you know, you look at Houston, you know. They just they just keep cranking out like really good starting pitchers, but through these these trades, these all these years in contention, it's going to catch up to them. Sure. And uh, but they do have just a great core group of players that I think uh, they'll, they'll be able to sustain success for a while. So yeah, the West is going to be pretty tough in three years, I think. It but, may be your it may be your East right now. You may have the tough you know yeah, maybe but, or the or the 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 NL West, which is a pretty yeah. good division. It too. just seems like Houston has found a way to keep its window open. Uh, I know I know Justin Verlander is going to have to retire at some point. They'll they'll probably have a season where everybody gets hurt. That's just kind of the way it goes. But um, Houston, Seattle, and the Rangers could have a pretty good pretty good tussle uh, in in three years. And uh, but again, you know the Rangers are hopefully building their core. They're hoping Josh Young adds to it. Right. Uh, hoping Jack Leiter and Cole Wynn and right. Kamar Rocker in three years could could be there. So um, they'll be they'll be better and they'll be contenders. But I I don't want to go beyond saying anything beyond that. Okay, but I want to do this one before we get into the last one, which is obviously the the off season question about pitching okay. and all of that. Yeah. Let's get to this one. You may not know this. It was an interesting question that popped in today, and I tried to look up some of it. Uh, do you know the status of Kyle Larson, C.J. Widger, and Thomas Ireland? All of the twenty twenty one draft class. Um, none of them have uh-huh. pitched since they turned pro. I do know that I looked up, and I believe it's Ireland and Larson might be on the sixty day. I don't know what that is, um, but we don't. I don't, I don't know. I, I, thought, tell you what, I thought Widger was a catcher. Uh, C.J. Widger is a right-handed pitcher, no, left-handed no, pitcher. That ought to tell you then how much I know. Yes. But, so uh, um, no, I'm. You know, they might be hurt. You know, yeah. they they might be guys who had something wrong who, when they were drafted. T-ball asked that, and I tell you what, T-ball, I promise you this. We'll we'll we'll, yeah, fast. we'll get the answer. We can ask people that, and we will find out for you. And uh, one of these days, when we get on the video. We'll we'll tell you exactly what it was. Just to know if you knew. Or I'll 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 put it in the next notes. The uh, next. Rangers Farm Report. Farm Report. There you go. Uh, at rangersa.com, five ninety nine a month, sixty dollars a year. Because you can make one phone call and get answers to all three of those. Probably. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Last question. All right. Okay. So it's going to be the one that uh, what's his name Andrew asked, but uh, Darren Fagley, 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 F A G L I E. Sure. Uh, uh, Darren Fagley is Ray Davis going to put his money where his mouth is and sign a big arm? And that's kind of what this guy up. What free agent pitchers do you think the Panthers? Are, the Rangers are interested in. Um, this is an interesting one that you can go a lot of ways. I mean, guys, the, uh, I think we know that that he is not he's he is not afraid to spend money if the deal's right. He did it yeah. last year. He yeah. spent five hundred and sixty million dollars. Right. The deal is, I think the question I've had to ask is, is there a guy worth no. a huge deal? I mean, Degrom may be the best guy out there, but you're talking forty million for a thirty four year old who gets hurt every every year. Every year, and and you know after after that, if Carlos Rodon opts out of his Giants deal, he becomes a, a very attractive one. He's making I think twenty two right now. So you're talking maybe at a least little 30. more than that. So um, 
I don't know that those are, I mean, you know, with his injury history, I don't know that that's somebody you want to spend the money on. Um, I, I think the the best thing the Rangers can do is re-sign Martin Perez Absolutely. or extend him. Uh, depending on how the roster shakes out, um, you know, they're going to need a bunch of roster spots for Rule 5 guys. So maybe they, um, you know, kind of say, hey, let's get our roster set and then do the deal after that. You know, like mid, mid-November, I think it's November 19th, they have to set the 40-man roster this year. Um, it's always when I'm driving to Colorado for Thanksgiving. So whatever <laughs> whatever day that is, that's the day it is. You look up Thanksgiving yeah, on I the calendar and hold out. Last year, last year, definitely last year, the, the, the year before that, I was in a, I made my wife, uh, we had to pull over into a McDonald's parking lot so I could listen to the conference call. And I don't remember last year, but um, anyway, right around Thanksgiving. Um, it's, in fact, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the Friday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, so maybe they work something out there. Okay. So Martin Perez, if you're going to spend some money and it's not going to kill you, but spend some money on Martin. And then I, I, I really think that the, the best pitcher the Rangers can get will have to be via trade. Um, you know, they, they have so much young talent and, and so maybe they find the right, the right partner that wants to rebuild. Uh, they can identify these teams or some of them, it's just right out there in the open. Uh, you, you, you go ahead and, and do that. And, you know, prices are probably a little cheaper in the off season sure. uh, than they would have been, let's say the trade deadline, because, you know, the trade deadline, there's that we got to go get it right now. And there's those extra two months of control. Well, the Rangers didn't really need a guy like that. Right. And, uh, you know, I know in 2015, it worked out that they were able to get Cole Hamels. Um, I don't think that that trades like that happen much anymore. I think right. that, uh, as far as sending five prospects, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think that if, if I think the Rangers big pitching acquisition this offseason will be via trade. And there's a couple of names being floated that could be potential uh, yeah. candidates. Bieber's name's been been mentioned out there. It would take a lot, I think. Pablo Lopez, who I've mentioned a few times. Yeah. Those are two great arms if you can somehow convince them. I know Al, uh, Al, Al, Al Contreras. Al Contreras. I don't, that guy, I don't think he's getting traded. <laughs> <No. laughs> I don't think he's getting moved. Pablo Lopez is probably, but he's under control through 2024. Right. Uh, Bieber is also. Um, he's, you know, Bieber's not quite what he was, but still a great pitcher. Sure. Um, he's had a good year, a, a decent year. So um, I, I think so too. A lot of people like to talk about uh, Clayton Kershaw, who's hurt again, who's now trying he's to get to back. come back. Yeah, he's about to come back. Uh-huh. That's while well, that's great and all of that. I, I mean, I think it's better if if LA were to win again, uh, win the World Series. Um, maybe he looks to do something at home, but that's an injury also that could be possibly there. Yeah. And what's it going to take? He he signed there for sixteen million. He's not signing for sixteen million. Well, it seemed like he was a fit for this year because the Rangers were kind of looking for a bridge a bridge guy, you know, because sure. they they really wanted somebody to solidify the rotation and and be a veteran leader and all that stuff. And uh, I get it. But it seemed like a one year deal would have been would have been right for him. Sure. Um, now he'll want multiple. If he if he well, finishes I don't the know. year, I don't know. And, and and he he is he is a year further down the road here. And and if the Dodgers win the World Series, maybe I I don't know. But um, I don't know end that, it with them too. I don't know that he f- fits as as well uh, as he would have for this season. Right. Um, and I guess another name out there is Noah Syndergaard, who's from our area. He struggled a little bit with the Yankees. Yes. Yeah. Well, and now he's with the Phillies. Um, and he made he's making twenty one million this year. I don't know that he's a uh, done 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 enough to command that kind of salary again. Hey, there's but, always Dallas Cock. Hey, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> I can feel the the arrows being shot at the camera <laughs> right now. So, um, so look, yes, I to answer the question, I think he would spend the money if the deal's right. But is yeah. it worth it? You don't spend money just because you have it, even though he's not afraid to. But I'm telling you right now, if he goes out and signs Jacob, and signs Jacob DeGrone, everybody's going to be all excited until he's out for 60 games. And then right. they're going to say, Did, was this a bust? And then it all falls on one guy every time that happens. And it's either you're spending uh-uh. stupid money or you didn't spend the money. Um, I, I don't know. I think you're I think you're right. I think it trades the best way. Well, Martin Perez is an easy pickup. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and they, they do want a big bat. You know, and everybody said left field. And I wrote, I wrote this also on uh, rangerstay.com. You know, Bubba Thompson, if he can play defense and find a way to get on base, have a 325 on base percentage with what he can do with his legs. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Last I, night. I really think that that would be good enough. I mean, it's, it's not power, and I know everybody loves, oh, he's, you know, home runs and all this stuff. And, 
and home runs are great, sure, but you know it's it's just a different dynamic. And when you look at the 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 best teams in Rangers history, um, obviously you had Elvis Anderson and Ian Kinsler, but you know Tom Goodwin was a really good mm-hmm. se- uh, center fielder and and stole a bunch of bases and and they got him to be the they traded Dean Palmer for him. They yeah. got him to be the pest at the top of the lineup. And so I, you know, if, if Bubba can can do that, uh, boy, you know, I mean, he just steals the bases so easily. Every time he comes to the plate, guys, yeah. the third baseman's on the grass. I mean, he just is. Yeah. Unless yeah. unless the situation doesn't call for it, but they they are in fear. They know if he gets a good bunt down, it will take a great play to get him. And he, you know, he he's hit uh, 29 homers the last two years in the minors, so he'll run into a ball. Sure. Every once in a while, uh, he's you know he's athletic. He's like that wiry strength. I mean, he's a former quarterback, football yeah. player. So, you know, this guy's a tremendous athlete and do a lot of things. But, uh, it, you know, it, it could be it could be pretty pretty interesting. And and you know, when he's on base, just trouble trouble is a, a thrown you know a wild pickoff throw away or or a, a, he was messing know. with them last night in the ninth sure, inning. Sure. I mean, so um, ended up still on a base. Anyway, I, I, I'm kind of intrigued by that idea. Yeah. You know, so. you've been pulling for Bubba all year. We love Bubba anyway. Yeah. And my gosh, he has done nothing but deliver since he's been there. I'm sorry. You can't ask much more yeah. Bubba than what sure. he's done. Sure. Well, guys, that's all the, the questions we had. Anything else before we get out of here? We got to get Chris on here. Yeah. Chris Young needs to come on and uh, we need to, you need to sit and listen to this. It's, you know, this is the guy who's who's going to be uh, uh, running running the show. He's running, and uh, I know he's been scrambling for Good the last for couple us. weeks. Yeah, he you know, he didn't need to come on here, so uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we'll thank him in advance. But yeah, let's uh, let's roll with that. And again, thanks for fifty shows. It's uh, absolutely it, we really appreciate you. We guys. got and we're going to keep doing them every week, guys. So let's get to Chris Young right after this. Joining us right now from his office here in Arlington, it's Texas Rangers general manager, Chris Young, who has taken the time to stop down and talk to us. Chris, thanks so much for coming on with us. Guys, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I like the new studio. Well, thank you very much. Uh, when, when when time permits, you can come on out to Fort Worth and we'll we'll go get some barbecue or something afterward. But uh, you're a little busy right now. No kidding. <laughs> Well, give me give me a couple months and I'll come make a visit anytime and I'll take you up on the barbecue. All right. Yeah. So um, it's been a couple weeks since uh, uh, the moves. Um, are you are you feeling that you are in uh, uh, a good place? Are you are you uh, all, all the shock and awe is over with? Yeah, I mean, I think more or less, yes. I think just making sure that um, as an organization, we've obviously uh, undergone a lot of change over the last couple of weeks and making sure that we've uh, tried to create some stability, make sure everybody knows um, that things are still looking up, the arrows pointed up. Uh, we have a lot of great things happening. We just need to focus on doing our jobs, finish, finishing the season strong, both at the uh, major league level and through the player development system, and uh, keep focusing on what we need to do to, um, day in, day out to, to really make our organization uh, a step closer to being a championship team. So, um, you know, I think that it's required some time, some effort, a lot of conversations, but we have great people here. Um, it's one of the great things about this place. And, um, you know, and it, I'm happy to do it. It's uh and it's part of the job. So I'm, it's been a good couple of weeks, been able to connect with a lot of people and um, we're in a good spot. What were what you seeing on the field uh, in the two weeks since uh, the manager, uh, Chris Woodward was dismissed? Are you seeing the kind of things you wanted to see? I mean, I, you know, I, for those, those, those of us who get there for BP, we're seeing more fielding stuff, more like fundamental work. Are you seeing a difference though in games? Yeah, Jeff, I mean, I think that stuff takes a little time to show up in the games. I think we have done some some good things in the games. I think the team has responded well. They're certainly competing with an energy and a, and a fight. Um, 
And so I think, but ultimately some of the changes that we are making may not manifest in terms of our win loss record immediately. It may take a little more time. There may be a lag effect. That said, uh, I am happy with our internal processes, the um, things we're prioritizing, the communication style. Bees has done a tremendous job. Uh, the coaches are engaged. Um, it's been a really wonderful experience thus far, and uh, I expect it's going to continue. I think the players understand um, that we're looking to build something special here. Uh, they're all in. They love bees, and I think it's been really, really positive uh, thus far. Um, you know how that shows up on the field day in, day out. It, it's um, it takes a little time, but yes, I am pleased with what I'm seeing. I think that we'll continue to get better. And uh, these are the little things that we have to continue to prioritize as uh, we want to become a championship club. And can, can you go a little bit more into what those priorities are? I mean, uh, you know, I'm, we, we, there was talking, you know, cleaning up the fielding stuff like that, but is it, 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 I'm guessing it runs deeper than that. Yeah. I mean, I really, there's, there's kind of three main things that I think are core fundamentals of who we need to be as an organization. I think the first is just a team that competes with energy. Um, every pitch we're competing, we're engaged. There's a passion to play this game. That's the first thing. Um, I think the second thing is just dominating the fundamentals. I think that isn't all good teams. Um, all playoff teams are very good at fundamentals and that's not just fielding the baseball. That's, um, doing the little things that it takes, whether it's uh, from a pitching standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, doing the little things that you have to do to be able to win baseball games. And then the third one is really just being a good teammate. And that's a lot. Uh, there's a lot that falls under that umbrella. Um, but I think that by and large, we all know what it means to be a good teammate and, um, and create an environment, a positive environment that gets the best out of each individual person uh, for the collective good of the group. And so I think that's those are the three main things that we've really um, wanted to lay out and challenge bees and the staff to improve. And I think that we're, we're seeing that. And I think that that's a, a positive step in the right direction here. I, you haven't been retired as a player for very long. Is it, is it, has it been difficult for you to, you know, critique ballplayers? Has that, was that a difficult transition? Is it, is it hard for you to, to tell a guy he needs to shape up for lack of a better word? No, I, you know, I think it's a great question, Jeff, because it's something I did not know in terms of coming into this role, how I would handle those situations. And I think as I reflect on the conversations I had with my coaches over, uh, the course of my major league and minor league career, the one thing I appreciated was honesty. And I think that all players do. And so I think it's really, really important to be very direct, very transparent, and very honest in conversations with the players. Um, but in terms of critiquing them, I think that I understand from a player's perspective how hard this game is and really the the challenges that are associated with um, the, 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 the highs and the lows of this game. So, um, I'm very, very sensitive uh, to those conversations, but I also understand what those conversations mean to a player. And I think by, by and large, I try to operate from a positive point of view. I know, again, I know how hard this is. I know as long as guys are giving their best effort and uh, they're preparing and they're committed to being good, mistakes are going to happen. But, um, you know, I think the bigger conversations for me are at times when we don't see the level of preparation or the level of, um, of commitment that's required to be great. And that's when it is my job to step in and make sure that we acknowledge that, we recognize it, we correct it moving forward. What have you seen from Tony Beasley? Uh, I, and you, you weren't the only one who had your, your world turned upside down. Just wondering what you've seen from, from him uh, here in yeah, what, Jeff, two weeks. Bees, Bees has been wonderful. We have a long track record together. Uh, Tony was my second minor league manager. My first full season of playing minor league baseball with the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Uh, ironically, in Hickory, North Carolina, they were Pirates <laughs> right. affiliated at That's the time. Right. Um, I played for, for bees and uh, we won a championship together in the minor leagues. So um, he's a very, very special man. Um, again, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him um, as a person, as a coach, as a leader. I think the biggest thing about Bees is that he has a unique ability to connect with people. He does it in a way that you know that Bees really cares about you. Uh, he can be very direct. He can set expectations and standards. 
uh, but does it in a way that you know genuinely he cares about you. And it takes a special um, communicator to be able to do that and have those hard conversations, uh, but to do it with love and, um, and showing that you really uh, care about the individual. So I think the players all respect him. The staff all respects him. I certainly have a, a great admiration for him and am uh, enjoying working with him in this capacity. And I, I think you've answered this, but th- this this is an audition for him, is it not? I'm sorry if I didn't hear the question. This is an audition for him to to absolutely. Bees, yeah. bees, no doubt. Bees is bees is the interim manager right mm-hmm. now, and um, this is um, an audition for him. He will be a con- uh, candidate for uh, the full time position. We'll uh, go through a process after the season, and bees is certainly a candidate. What 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 do you want in the next full time Rangers manager? Well, Jeff, I, I think it's slightly premature to answer that exactly. Um, I think that right now we're doing some assessing internally uh, within our small leadership group of really what we're looking for, what attributes and characteristics we're looking for in the next Rangers manager, but also where we are as an organization. We feel like we're entering a fun era of Rangers baseball, and I think that we're on the cusp of really this, this window opening for us to compete for the playoffs year in, year out. Uh, as you know, we've talked about a lot. Our farm system's in really good shape. Uh, we have a lot of good talent at the mi- at the major league level, and um, we got to add. We, we have the resources to add to it. We need to continue to add to it. But um, I, I think from that standpoint, we're taking in both the criteria we feel is important in general uh, toward th- that a manager needs to exhibit, but also um, how that fits where we are right now. And then from there, we'll kind of uh, put together a list and and uh, get to work on a managerial search process. Yeah, it's kind of a, a unique situation because you, you guys are happy with the way things are going, with the way the rebuilding's going. So when you think of like new manager, you're thinking, oh well, we need to we need to over, we need to overhaul. But it would seem like continuity has a place here too. No doubt, and I think that. Um, you know, that continuity, we should expect to some degree, whether it's through Tony Beasley or with a lot of the staff. I mean, I think we have a very talented group of coaches. And I think that, um, you know, um, certainly we are excited about um, who we are and what we have to look forward to, but we're going to look to continue to evolve and improve as well. So I think that, yes, you are right. It is um, maybe a a interesting time for some change, but I think really what we're trying to do is enhance where we are and take us to the next level. Okay. And, and I mean, you played for what, five, five major league teams. So you, you, you I mean, you know, we all know who you play, you know, managers were, you know, Bruce Bochy, the great Bruce Bochy, uh, one world series with, with Ned Yost. Uh, it, how much of, how much of those characteristics will, will be in your mind? Or are you just going to start fresh and whatever, whatever happens, happens? Well, I think, I think it's a fair question. First of all, I think we have to acknowledge our, previous experiences, they shape who we are, right? So I think that um, certainly my experiences playing for Buck Walter and Bruce Bochy and Bud Black and uh, Terry Collins, Lloyd McClendon, and, and then um, um, Ned Yost in Kansas City, I've had a variety of experiences. I've been exposed to some of the best managers in the game. So there's certainly um, things there that I believe in that are really at my core, what I believe a good manager, a good leader does, and those will factor in. But I think it's also very important to keep an open mind um, Mm -hmm. and to not eliminate anybody, to understand that uh, leadership comes in a lot of different forms and we need to select the right form for the Texas Rangers. And we we may already have that in Tony. We'll we'll continue to evaluate and go through the process and um, make the best decision for what we feel like is the future of the team. Yeah, I I, I spent some time uh, the other day like just looking at past coaching staffs that you played, you played under. I mean, there are some, there are some <laughs> really interesting names and, <laughs> and guys out there. I mean, I, it's probably, it's probably, but you know, it, it's you probably, should probably share the list with me, Jeff. I, oh, okay. I probably need to go back through it myself and refresh my memory a little bit. I've had a lot of them. That's what happens when you play for five different organizations over the course of your career. You come across a lot of people. That that Mariner season sneaky, man. I, I, you know, that, that was a, pretty tumultuous year with the Rangers. So we were pretty busy, but that was a sneaky, that, that one year in Seattle always sneaked up on me. <laughs> that 14, that 14 Mariners team was really good. We missed the playoffs by one game and uh, just a number of things that could have gone our way over the course of the season. We had a killer road trip at the end of the year that I felt like just took the wind out of our sails. And uh, 
it was Seattle's got tough travel as is, but uh, you right. throw in a bad road trip at the end of the season, and we uh, played ourselves out of playoff contention. Mm. Um, speaking of playoff contention, you got every minor league team has a winning record right now. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Win, wins and losses don't necessarily uh, dictate whether a, a minor league system has had a, a good year, but I'd imagine it can't hurt. So I. I I know we still got a few more weeks of the minor league season left. What what's been your overall uh, picture of the, of the farm system? Well, I, I think Jeff, you you pointed out an important thing, and I think that if we want to create a winning culture here, it's important to have winning teams. I want our players to feel what it's like to be in a winning environment, and so. Uh, While that's not our number one goal in terms of our player development system, it's about um, developing these players uh, individually and collectively to be uh, good major league players. Um, A byproduct of that is a a winning record. And I think that that we strive for that. We want our players to play a team style that um, night in, night out gives a team a chance to win. And so uh, I'm excited to see that. That's with a lot of moves being made. We've had a lot of players advance, uh, get moved up. We still have some advancements coming in the next few weeks. And I think that, uh, you know, our managers have done a really really good job of continuing to have, as you said earlier, continuity um, in their coaching style and creating an environment where players understand what the expectation is night in, night out. Um, I think Ross Finstermaker and John Bonifay have done a a tremendous job job from a leadership perspective. Kenny Holmberg, our field coordinator, uh, Jordan Tees, Danny Clark, they've all done a great job of really creating this winning mentality in the minor leagues. And then, you know, credit goes to the to the coaches at each affiliate and the players themselves for executing it. Uh, one, one of those minor leaguers is, is Josh Young. Um, uh, you know, I, and, and there's been a lot of noise, uh, some of it from me, about when, when, uh, <laughs> when he will be making his major league debut. And and by the time this airs, maybe he has. Uh, what? What though? Like, you know, it's been a real tough two years for him with the injuries, especially this year. Uh, what have you seen from him? Like how he's kept it all together and and still been driven to be this great prospect and potentially great major leaguer. Well, I think that what you've identified in terms of the challenges, the adversity Josh has faced um, adversity comes in a lot of shapes and forms. And I think for Josh, his has been on the medical side and uh, everywhere he has played, he's performed, uh, but staying on the field has been the biggest challenge. And so I think for Josh, uh, the lessons he's learned going through these, and they've been, you know, kind of freak injuries. It's not something that's wear and tear type, Uh, maybe the foot to some degree was stress related, Uh, But I think just over time, him uh, understanding what he needs to do to stay on the field, um, going through a normal offseason, understanding how he needs to train. You learn a lot about yourself through rehab. And uh, I certainly had my fair share of surgeries. So um, Mm. I I recognize um, what it did in terms of the uh, intestinal fortitude that you have to find. Um, that inner belief and conviction. And then you have to make adjustments as well. Your body uh, over the course of time changes. You've had your certain parts surgically repaired. Uh, so you have to make accommodations for those things. And, uh, you know, these are challenges that Josh has had to learn at an early point in his career. Uh, but the one thing I am extremely confident in is that these challenges are going to serve him well moving forward. Josh has a tremendous mind. Um, he is a, um, a gamer. Uh, he's going to do whatever it takes to get out on the field. And um, I think these challenges for him knowing that he can put this behind him, that he's uh, been through multiple rehabs, he knows what it takes. Um, it's going to prepare him for success at the big league level. And we're very, very uh, excited for him and proud of the way he's worked and the, uh, the, the position that he has put himself in um, on the cusp of the big leagues. All right, I've got, I've got one more question. Then I'm going to hand it over to John. Um, you have a ton of rule five guys uh, this year. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. And then, and then you have also, you have this great farm system and, and, and part of the reason you, have a farm system is to trade those guys to help with the the big league club. How are you going to juggle all these things? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to start sorting through it. I mean, I think part of it is seeing how these guys finish, um, seeing who's healthy at the end of the year, who finishes strong, who kind of fades at the end and um, you know, who will we'll make the best decisions we can um, to really um, set ourselves up for a, uh, a future that involves, you know, that's built around our player development system. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's a good problem to have. I think there, we've seen it over the last couple of years, a couple other organizations that have had, um, you know, 
close to 10 plus roster ads. We may or may not have that many. We're going to work through it. We're going to rely on our scouts. We're going to rely on our R&D department. We're going to do our own evaluations. And uh, we'll come up at the end of the um, at the end of the year um, into the off season with the best roster we have that we feel like puts us in play in shape and uh, in a position to win uh, not only in 2023 but beyond. Ten would be nuts. That would God, be that's crazy. <laughs> but but I could you know I just kind of going over the list. You could make a case for that many. I, it, yeah. It's it's a, a weird thing, and I don't know how it happened. I don't know if COVID had a part in that, but it's just. It probably did. That had everything. And you got but, a deep farm system. It, it's a yeah. problem that you have to face. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, it's a good problem. <laughs> there's no hey, doubt we, about it. And there's strategy involved with it, and understanding what the needs of the league um, are, what our individual needs are here with the Rangers, and then um, and who fits. And it's you know, as well. I'd like to say every player will be on added to the roster. That's you know not going to be the outcome, and right. we'll sure. have to sort through it. We'll make some tough calls, and um, you know. Our hope is that we don't lose anybody, but in the end, we you know we may. It's just it's the nature of a very good farm system. Right, right. All right, John, take over. All right, now this is the fun one. I, I have to go before I get into the really fun one. This is always a, a fun one to ask because I, I, I play this game with all the minor leaguers and the big leaguers that are hitters. I always play what's called the home run game. We talk about the first one they ever hit, the farthest one. With a pitcher, you never ask them this until they're retired. So this one makes you go to a bad place, but you played – 13 years in the big leagues. So every pitcher that has any uh, longevity in the major leagues, I don't care how good you are, you give up home runs. So I want to know, is there one you'll always remember, the the bomb you gave up? And here's what I want to know. Who hit it and what was the pitch? Did you leave a slider up? Or who was it? And how far do you think it went? Oh, I, I've, John, I've given up so many home runs. Um, <laughs> it's hard to identify one <laughs> with me most but I will tell you one I'll, I'll tell you one and this is an example really for uh, any young pitcher out there and you know maybe even some of the if there are any young pitchers in our system that are listening to this podcast yeah podcast, uh, my rookie year my first full season in the big leagues I was at, uh, pitching against the Mariners um, at home in, in the, the ballpark in Arlington next door and uh, pitched very very well and had I think I think it was either a tied game or we were winning uh, late in the game. And I, it was the eighth inning and uh, facing Ichiro. And I'd gotten him out inside all night. And so I thought, okay, um, Ichiro came up. And uh, I think I started away and then tried to come in. And Ichiro was ready for that inside pitch. He turned on it and hit it in the right field bleachers. We lose the game, I think, two to one. I think that was the winning run. I got the loss. And it was a great lesson for me that in a, you know late in the game when you're facing the best hitters, don't go to a spot where you can get beat. You know, just keep the ball away. Let him take a single to, to left. Uh, would have been the smarter thing to do. So it was a hard lesson to learn. It was a loss in my major league career um, after pitching so well that night. But um, in the end, it was a valuable lesson I, I took with me the rest of my career. So that one stands out uh, from a long time ago. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And you know what? That, that That's a fun one to listen to. And yeah, Ichiro, he could turn on the inside pitch. Yeah. I remember that. That's he, had, he had sneaky power. He had sneaky he power. He had real pop. Uh, he had real pop. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, you he played with him. power, and you, you missed your spot. He could get it. So, uh, you know, he would stay very disciplined, take his singles the other way. or uh, But the second you made a mistake, he could turn on it and hit it pretty far. Yep. Okay, so let's get into you and have some fun here. So, food. What is your favorite type of food? I mean, if you get a choice, I mean, are you a steak guy, seafood? What is it you like to eat? Well, I, I like probably uh, – I like barbecue and Tex-Mex. So, those are my two favorites. That's being from Texas, absolutely. Now, do, do you do you like go to the top barbecue restaurants? I mean, or are we just talking? Oh yeah. About, okay. What's your favorite one in the area? No. So I just tried a new one that just opened up not far from where I live. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Douglas. Um, it was very very good. I highly recommend it. It's probably a, a kind of obscure, not uh, not very well known uh, barbecue spot right now. But I feel like. Terry Black's. Um, I've had Cadillac Barbecue. I've, I'm on the Dallas side, so I've kind of tried most of the ones in Dallas. Um, mm-hmm. um, so I'm trying to think of any others, but there's a lot of good ones, and I look for ranching out and uh, trying all of them at some point. Right, barbecue look. is another good one. I love that one. It's not far from my house. So, uh, well, yeah, I've got uh, a good rotation of barbecue spots. Her, her Tato is right down the street from you guys in Arlington. It's it's terrific. Barbecue? 
Yeah, Hurtado Barbecue. It's it's pretty good. It's right off a of division. There you go. So. Hurtado is really good. They they <laughs> cater to the clubhouse from time to time. So I've had it here in the in the stadium. It's amazing. Really yeah. really good barbecue. That's, yeah, well, gold the 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 new the new hot thing is Goldie's. They're number one in the Texas Monthly. It's out here in West Fort Worth. So, but it's only open. Some of these places are only open three days a week. And then I don't know how you feel about standing in line for places, but but sometimes you got to do it. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. I don't mind standing in line, Jeff. And uh, okay. look, we'll we'll hit Goldie's when I come over to the studio. That's uh, let's keep all right, it on we'll the list, do it. All right? We'll do it. Absolutely. We'll cater it though. We're not standing. No, in they, they we, you know, they're number one. I don't know if they're going to make any exceptions. Okay, that right. sounds fair. All right, now, do you eat fast food at all? And if you do, what is it? Uh, I do eat fast food from time to time. Look, we've got three kids that are in the um, <laughs> in the middle of sports activities. Yeah. They play everything all over the Metroplex. It's mainly my wife driving them around, but uh, we we eat on the run a lot. So, um, you know, I think the the main ones that are fast food rotation right now or in and out burger whataburger and raising canes those are the three canes. go-to and popular ones in the young family <laughs> <laughs> now do you now i know this is the politically incorrect thing to ask but are you a whataburger guy or an in and out guy oh i love them both i don't discriminate when it comes to to those two i love them both so well you're a Texan, uh, really right? it's it's the in and, and the ones closest to us are kind of right next to each other so really i look at the line and judge uh which one's yeah. going to be faster? <laughs> well, like the In-N-Out lines are long, but they're fast. But they do. They go. They get you through. The there. Whataburger lines are long because they're yeah. slow. Yeah, but they're both good. Yeah, burgers. I left out. I left out Chick Fil A too. My wife <laughs> would be mad at me if I didn't throw in Chick Fil A. I, I love Chick Fil A as well, but that's one of her staples. I think that's a given. I think Chick Fil A, especially <laughs> when you have kids, is a given. The, the, right. Wilson, the Wilsons, the Moors, and the Youngs could hit any of these because yeah, well, that's where we all go. Hey, let me ask you this. <laughs> What what is your favorite home cooked meal and who cooks it? Is it your wife? Did your mom make you something special? Grandma, what's what's your favorite home cooked meal and who cooks it? Actually, my favorite home cooked meal is is um, I love grilling. So I love um, just a good burger, a good cheeseburger. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't get to do it often enough, obviously with our schedule, but um, I love grilling. My wife loves it when I do it as well. Kind of take something off her plate. So, and the kids love it as well. So that's, that's my favorite thing. Just good cheeseburger in the backyard, cheeseburger and hot dogs that are uh, our go-to grilling um, in the backyard. And uh, I love doing it. What kind of setup do you have? Have a normal, a normal grill, a gas grill, and right. uh, just I, I try to get good meat, and uh, my <laughs> kids love it if I grill the buns. My wife's asked me oh, to caramelize fancy. the onions, so Ooh, that's um, you know, it gets a little more complicated than I'd like. But uh, <laughs> we have a couple, a couple kiddos who are particular on their cheese selection. One uh -huh. needs Kraft singles, the other likes ch uh, plain cheddar. So anyway, um, try to appease <laughs> everybody. But um, hey, man, in the when end, when yeah. Having family dinner, everyone's happy. That's what matters. Exactly. Hey, when dad's running the grill, man, you could throw the different cheeses on. I know. I love doing that too. Okay, so this yeah. is always a fun one, and I, I know what you'll answer because if your wife sees this, but who do your kids fear the most, you or mom? Uh, John, I'm sorry. My computer froze for a split oh. second. Who does what the most? Okay, so who do the kids fear the most, you or mom? <laughs> they 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 see dad's uh probably emotions more but i think they fear mom more they know when mom's mad they're they're in they're in uh real trouble so um dad i think they see loses uh his temper from time to time or they watch ranger games with me and uh hear me uh you know scream at the tv out of excitement or frustration but um but when mom gets mad they know okay uh we're in trouble yeah yeah, <laughs> that's the way most good households are run right there. I'll tell you what. That's right. Absolutely. OK, so what would your wife say is the most annoying habit you have that bugs her? Oh, boy. Oh, uh, probably biting my fingernails from time to time. Um, she says when I get nervous, I bite my fingernails or uh, the other one is probably when my my mind is, uh, you know, I'm off somewhere else and I'm, I can't concentrate or I'm thinking about something else at work mainly. Um I don't hear her completely and she can tell she knows that when I check out and um, that I'm not hearing what she says and she'll have to try to rein me back in a little bit. Yeah. So, so your wife is like every other wife that lives. Okay. No doubt. <laughs> All right. Last one. This is my fun one. I've asked this to a lot of people. We get some great answers. It's what's something that nobody knows about Chris Young. Here's some of your players and some of their fun ones. Like you may have already heard this, but like, uh, 
Jack Leiter can't stand peanut butter, won't eat peanut butter. Uh -huh. um, you know, you, that that's something there. We actually, your predecessor, he has he has airplane underwear, JD. He has airplane underwear he wears for each pair that go in and from, they said. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Davis Wenzel got his finger cut off when he was five. Don't worry, it was five. It was all fixed back then. But what is something nobody knows about Chris Young? Hmm, that's a really good question. Probably it's it's just on the personal side. I, I love a good true crime story. So I, my wife will make fun of me. She's like, you, you, know, you come home, you can watch anything. And to take your mind off baseball, you go to like a, a true crime story. So <laughs> uh, the first 48 or something oh, like yeah. that. I love, oh, I love that. And so I... Uh, I really enjoy that. I also like um, I also like to work in the yard. So I like, you know, some landscaping okay. projects or uh, just little things. I'm not very good at it, but more landscape design. Um, you know, I've enjoyed that in a couple homes we've lived in. Uh, so, you know, those are two little things. But unfortunately, I, I don't get enough time for either of those. I tell you sure. about the, the first the first 48 has really has really unfairly probably shaped my opinions of a lot of cities in the US. Yeah, no kidding. But you it's know, fun to watch. Especially I, I, Memphis. I'm very weary of Memphis. <laughs> very weary of Memphis. I've watched it too. I watched one last night. I can't help it. I get caught in those things all the time. I enjoy you know, them. I'll tell I'll, I'll tell you something crazy about me. My yeah. one of my one of my favorite shows is Air Disasters. And for you know, <laughs> for somebody who flies a lot, it, you would think that's not a that's not a good match, but man, that's and it, you know, these are terrible, unspeakable tragedies. But <laughs> I can't, I can't, I just love air disasters. I'm a true, I'm a true <laughs> crime junkie. I even listen to, yeah, I even listen to the true crime podcast sometimes. Okay. I like to listen to. Well, Chris, this has been fantastic, man. I really appreciate you stopping down. Look, I yeah. know this is a busy time. Jeez. Your job's gotten a lot busier. We're getting ready for the off season here in about a month, a little over a month. Uh, it's been great for you to stop down, and we really appreciate you coming on. Guys, I appreciate you having me. I'd love to join in person sometime soon. And thank you guys for your support and uh, and rooting for the Rangers. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe November. November. I, Get that manager hired in October. Let's, and we'll let's have put it on the November. calendar. I would love that. All right. We'll do it. That's it. That's awesome. Texas Rangers general manager, Chris Young. Chris, thanks so much, sir. We'll see you out at the yard. Thank you, guys. That was Chris Young. It, big thing for Chris to come on. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to get out of here now. Uh, we kind of did down in the bus leagues with all of that, talking minor leaguers and what's going on. Sure. Uh, we get right back on it next week, guys. Uh, week after that, it's tentative. But week after that, we may be having a guy from MLB Pipeline. He's confirmed he's going to come on. He is on vacation. Uh, big name. I uh, like having him on there. So, that, look, we're getting guys every week to come on this thing. Yeah. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep going until a vacation rolls in. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to keep this thing going. So, 50 isn't where it stops. It's just halfway yeah. through the beginning of 100. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we need to, like, start a new season or something. Sure I don't, can. I don't know. But we, we got to talk to we got to talk to a marketing director or something. <laughs> Absolutely. got to dig one of those up. But, anyway, again, just a couple of reminders. RangersToday.com, five ninety nine a month, $60 for a year. Uh, thirty-five dollars for six months. Get you through the uh, off season. Yeah, I mean, this is this is uh, going to be a big off season. There's there's nothing uh, bigger a team can do than hire a manager Absolutely. in the off season. So that that's that's going to be happening right off the the, the bat. So don't just because the season ends. Don't don't. You're still going to get your Ranger news. Don't go into football mode just yet. And then uh, you know also our our YouTube channel uh, where hopefully you guys are watching this right now. Uh, you need to subscribe to this as well. Um, keep it keeps uh keep keep building our, our our fan base our subscriber list uh get us uh get us the chance to monetize this son of a gun and absolutely and uh, the more the more money that we make the more opportunities we have to, to get out and do stuff so uh, be sure to do that it's free don't cost nothing as, as john belushi says in, in <laughs> animal house so uh <laughs> go ahead and let, let's do that too all right, guys, that's it for this one. Big thanks to Chris Young once again for coming on with us. But until next time, number 51's coming. And, guys, we will see you at the yard.
Roxo Media House.